Hi, my name is Jerry Wenstrom, and I'm here on Whidbey Island, Washington, in my large 2,000-square-foot uh, studio that is currently full of these box beings that I've done. Um, I didn't plan it this way, but in retrospect, I see that they're all very coffin-like, and they, have, they all open up, and they have other beings inside of them, faces inside and out. Uh, this piece I call the key to heaven, and so on this one you have to put in a dime, and then you turn this crank, and you get your little ticket, and it has a picture of an angel, and then you write your prayer on the back, and put it in the prayer wheel here, give the wheel a spin. And then there are many beings that will support your prayers. You have, uh, I'll just show you some of them, there's there, there, there are several inside here. And there's a Native American here image. And after you've done all of that, you then turn the key to heaven, which actually gets the whole thing going, which is right here. So you just simply turn this key. I call this one birth, death. and. There's a strobe light on the inside, and then inside it opens up, and there's a figure, let me turn the bright light off, there's a figure which is, uh, if any of you have seen my book, this is the cover, came from the cover of my book, The Inspired Heart. This particular piece is the largest I've done. It's over nine feet tall and has many working components. Its most uh, active component is a steam engine, which is uh, in here, in this little door. And the engine, once it's activated, that little wheel spins and this key becomes the, it, it, the uh, gas valve. This um, is what you need to turn the gas valve on, which is down below here. So you put the key onto there and that'll need to be turned. And then the fire is lit in this chamber. You know, this being like a being, this, this is like the pubic area. So there's the fire in the belly that happens there. And this is the steam exhaust where um, once the engine is running, water and steam comes out of this little guy's mouth and it gets recycled back into the boiler. And this doorknob, when it's turned, opens the above door and the face comes out and looks around and goes back in and also making more noise. <laughs> and then on the side, it does a kind of what I call Tibetan chanting and there, there are a series of buzzers up and down the structure and because of the shape of it they resonate differently in the different positions so it has the effect of Tibetan chanting. And everything was usually something else in its original form. There are bathtub feet and salt and pepper shakers down here. This was a trivet. Um, this was the headlight from an old Volkswagen. That, uh, and these are old water meters and they have lighted components inside of them. And many plumbing fixtures and doorknobs and this is an artist's model hand that also moves. This one opens by way of this trigger here. This is the fountain, it's a wishing fountain. You make a wish and you push the button. When you push the button after your wish, you get a nice little affirmation.
This space used to be used, my wife used it for her women's groups that she ran for eight years, Gaia Spirit Rising. And so this mural was based on that kind of transformative women's work. And uh, it was based roughly on uh, Michelangelo's Piazza. And uh, it's about 15 feet high and has that transformative imagery. And so in retrospect, what I see is that in my, in my own personal journey of walking into everything that looked like death, I mean, I destroyed my art, I gave everything I owned away, and I found in that something sacred and full of life. And I feel these boxes have become an expression of that. They're coffin-like, they're a little spooky, and yet they're whimsical and they're full of life and they're ridiculous. And I'm, I've, I'm glad that that, um, understanding arrived at this point in life without my conscious intent to bring that about. I mean, I mostly created these out of a kind of playfulness and just a, an intuitive wandering. And I feel that that's the meaning, almost like a dream, how we can interpret a dream. I feel the meaning that comes through has that kind of mystery and it's not calculated and planned, but I like that it happens in its own way.